Hello everybody, I hope you're all well today. I wanted to give you a bit of a presentation today with a little mini me in the corner. So here I go. So we're making some changes to davidluke.com and I wanted to talk you through today how we've got to where we're at. So this has been a very key quote for me during this pandemic. And I think it really speaks to me about the fact that we've just accelerated very fast into the future. And things that were on a certain path have just gone perhaps five to 10 years sooner to that path than we might have already done. So then moving to what the future really does look like, this is one of my favorite films, uh, Wally, which is set in a future earth where it's become a wasteland after humanity's rubbish mass consumerism environmental damage has left it uninhabitable and that we humans have then uh, become just extremely lazy doing nothing for ourselves relying entirely on artificial intelligence to satisfy our every whim and i'm not saying that that's exactly where we've got to but um I think it's fair to say that lots of things have accelerated and that we need to make sure we jump on the really, really good ones. So when you look at the future, I mean, I think it's also fair to say that none of us is an expert in this. Uh, none of us know exactly what's going to happen next. But I think there are some things that are really coming through, such as business needing to lead the way in social and environmental change, that instead of customers and consumers in the future, we businesses and organizations will have followers and fans who believe in what you stand for. I feel quite strongly that people will start to buy fewer things, but buy better things that might last longer. And that feeds into where I think the linear take, make, use, lose approach that we have typically had will change as we really look to adopt more aspects of the circular economy. And I think the, the growing need for uh, the connection that we have still, though, through, yes, the physical specialisms, but also online convenience. And looking at what's changed already, there has been rapid online growth, as you know. I think we've had lots of anecdotal reports from independent retailers in school wear that what was previously 10% of turnover is turning into more like 40, 50% of turnover. We know just generally shopping, uh, the, the Salesforce shopping index for 2020 quarter two showed that that online shopping increased by 43% and for clothing it increased by 49%. I think moving on to the, the fact that business has been what might perceive to be bailed out at some point, it means that it's not inconceivable that government is going to want something in return and that there may well be a shift in the social contract between business and society and the way that we look at capitalism. I think that there is also a big shift in what convenience means. Um, browsing and picking up general clothing in supermarkets, for example, is something that we can't really see happening anytime soon. So there is likely to become a gap for the, the end users and the conscious consumers to think how can they be buying their shopping in this new world. I think the resurgence of local shopping during the pandemic as well and the support for local businesses has been absolutely fantastic. It's grown um, because smaller businesses can be more agile to adapt and switch operations to deliveries and appointments and other kinds of innovations. And I think this will remain a vital part of retail. But there is a growing need for businesses to connect more closely with their users so that we can understand more fully what they need and want. And you might have seen during the pandemic, Heinz launched their Heinz to Home service. Um, but listening to their commercial director talking about it, he said that whilst there is potential, the value in this is in the data, the testing and the learning rather than any scale proposition. And so that's where we get to that the announcement today is that we're, we are going to be going online with basic generics. And whilst this was initially part of contingency planning because of the, the, the pandemic, that we had a fear that we would be left with generic stock this year, that it would be very difficult to sell it through. And that for us to have, you know, huge amounts of uh, cash tied up in that generic stock could be 
uh, something that might finish us off. Uh, but actually, as we got to thinking about going online with basic generics, we started to think about some of the other ways that we believe it will advance us and you. So one of those ways is that we believe that we can try to reach people we have not been able to before. And that's you or us, uh, that there are ways now that we can reach them and that that will allow us to further support and promote what you do as a specialist. Um, we want to be able to have direct access to data, insights, product feedback, trends, but all that information that really helps us produce better products, which in turn benefits you if we're responding much more appropriately to what works in the market. We also really want to build a movement and a following for good business. So that's towards you as the specialist providing the bespoke service you do for schools and then towards us as a responsible, responsible producer of generic school uniform. And I strongly believe that these two approaches can complement each other and strengthen uh, both you and us. So looking at the plan, which you might have just seen a moment ago, uh, it is the basic core products only that will be available to users online. So for example, here, it's just the plain polo shirt, not the trimmed or the contrast color polo shirt. We will have a pricing policy that is not a threat to yours and introducing special wholesale packages. We will be looking at lots of end user outreach and marketing to produce materials that we can share with you for your use as well. And we will increase our strong promotion of independent retail specialists, encouraging that cross pollination between us and endorsing your service to schools and parents. So the plan is then that we would be launching sometime in August, but with a very organic approach because we are not expecting volume through this channel, but just want to get started whilst the subject matter is relevant at back to school. So for those of you still with me, um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about why this is not a threat. Um, we're not targeting your business. We know you're the professionals who know your schools, know your market, and we just want to complement that. Um, as I've said, the specialist products that you have pieced together to create the uniform will not be available online. So we're not trying to sell to your customers um, we, we do not intend to dilute sales through this, this means. We'll be working really hard to get the pricing and wholesale offers right so you can be confident we're not cutting across you on core lines. I would also like to think that as we invest in doing things right in, in pr producing our garments that we can communicate that through to the end user and that as a result uh, supports and endorses your supply of our products to your schools. And I really believe quite strongly, although my head's in the way of some of that there, but uh, that this, this combination is really strong, that the uh, independence you have to curate the, the best uniform for your schools with a combination of brands, and then our independence in developing our reach beyond the boundaries that we've had. So um, I hope you can see that this movement we're aiming to build is something that you can be part of too. So that, that this graphic is uh, is showing support rather than intended as a picket line. Um, because I, I feel things are changing that are bigger than any of us individually, but through working collectively to keep finding the ways to complement each other, I feel we can all thrive together. So thank you very much for listening and please do email your thoughts through to me. So before I go, I would just like to repeat that our championing of independent retail will not change. Whilst the world around us has changed, is changing, and we want to open up the conversation with the users of our products, we are not targeting your business in doing that. We see that the combined force of, of you, our independent retailers, David Luke, the brand, as a formidable team, and we want to have that more direct platform from which to communicate a meaningful brand experience. So, as I've said, I welcome hearing your thoughts, as do the rest of the team here, and I will speak to you again soon.